Hello everybody. Today in the workshop we have a Japanese maple. The variety of this Japanese maple is coral bark. Uh, the scientific name is Sengukaku. Um, this one was collected two years ago. Um, it was an urban yamadori, meaning it was came out of someone's landscape. A friend of mine's name is Jimmy Nice in uh, Aiken, South Carolina. And I've transplanted it into this growing tub and I've done nothing but let it grow freely for the past two years. This video is going to be the first styling that, of this tree. It may be a two-part video because we're going to have to get a little more in-depth on this one. Thank you for the positive feedback I've received, by the way, from everyone. Uh, there's a few folks that were wanting to know a little bit more about my thought process on branch selection. Um, so we're going to get a little more in-depth with this tree here. This tree is just now starting to put out the flower shoots. Um, if you look over here on this side, right here, you can actually see one of the flowers that's already been putting out on this tree. So timing-wise, this should have been done maybe a week ago. Um, it's still to the point where the buds are just beginning to swell. They're not completely come out yet. Uh, but I have a few of the lower ones that are already popping. Of course, the lower part of the tree is always going to come out before the upper part of the tree because the energy comes from the roots through the tree. So progressively, it pushes from the bottom to the top. And then the top, of course, is the dominant part. So it's the part that's going to grow once everything's leafed out the strongest. Today, we're going to focus on branch selection, why we're selecting the particular branches we're selecting. And uh, we're going to take it a little bit slower with this tree. Um, we'll touch a little bit on the wiring. I'm going to show you the techniques that I use to wire the tree and uh, a little bit more in depth for, I guess, a more of a medium to semi-advanced um, discussion on this tree. Okay, first thing is what we're going to start out with is branch selection. If you look at this tree, um, right there where you're looking at it now, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Bear with me here a moment. Perfect. That is the projected front of the tree that I have seen. Um, I've looked at this tree several times. I'm going to rotate it while I talk here so you can just see all the different angles of this tree. Um, as you can see, that on this side of the tree, we have two branch stubs where I've sawn them off. And you can see the profusion of back budding on this deciduous species. Uh, Japanese maple is really big on putting out profuse amounts of back budding when you chop the upper branches on them at the proper time of year. We have one right here that I've chopped and one right here that's chopped. And you can see there's just a mass of branches down below where these chop sites are. Um, I've selected this as the front because, of course, you can, it, has, it shows the best nabari as well as it has a decent bit, a bit of movement along this line. Your eye gradually takes you to this part of the tree. And from here, it can either flow out that direction or this direction. And because this is going to be an uh, informal upright tree, I want it to be balanced. You always want to try in an informal upright to have the apex in line with the base of the tree. If not, it'll be a uh, slant style or semi-slant style or cascade, semi-cascade, etc. Um, so this main branch flow here being selected as the, the basic outline of the tree. The next thing we do is we need to remove everything that's not going to go along with that style. So this branch right here is going to need to be removed. The two in the back that were sawn off is going to need to be removed. This one here is going to need to be removed as well. All of those don't flow with this particular line that we're going for on the tree. Uh, there are tons of buds around and below the areas that I'm going to cut. And I did that intentionally because Japanese maple has a tendency, if you can see even from this leader up here, I chopped it way back up here, but it actually died clear back. What these things do is you, you cut it off and it dies back to the next bud node. Um, and it's true for even these larger branches. These larger branches go the same way as the smaller ones. So when you're trimming a Japanese maple in particular, you always want to trim it higher than the next level of buds and let it die back naturally to that next set of buds and then you can either snap off or cut off the remaining branching the following season. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take off this top branch down to this leader. That's going to be my new leader. I'm going to take this branch off down to here. 
I have a branch here and a smaller branch down here, which will keep it from dying back any further down the trunk. Fingers crossed. It doesn't always work out that way, but that's the game plan. I'm going to remove this branch here completely. And um, I have some buds down here, so hopefully it won't die back any further than where I'm going to carve it. Same thing goes back here with these two branches. I have lower branches everywhere where I intend to remove these branches. I've made sure I've left lower branches on here. And what I'll do is I'll let some of these branches grow freely. As you can see, some of them are quite long already. Uh, but I'm going to let them continue to grow like this for a year or two just to ensure that those wound sites start callousing there and it doesn't die back any further. Okay, we are back. Um, all I've done so far since we've talked last is just chop the main branches off that I've shown you. Um, another thing I didn't mention that I would like to now is whenever I'm planning the design of a tree, what I like to do is take some either white correction fluid, um, a paint pen, anything that you have like that that you can use to draw on the branches or the trunk of the tree, I do. And if you look here, at one point in time, I wasn't sure which branch I was going to keep or remove. I marked both of them. That gives me a perspective both ways as to what exactly I was going to do. Um, of course, I decided to remove this one here and keep this one because that brings balance back into the tree's design. I'll go ahead and spin it around here so you can see the back of the tree. Um, all I've done is made the major cuts here that were necessary to remove these branches. Um, I went ahead and got another grinder, so I'm going to be grinding these back down today as well, using the same technique I applied on the Trident Maple, uh, where you grind it down kind of smooth and build a little bit of texture in it. That way, when it calluses over, it looks like a, just a where a branch broke off several years ago, and it, over time it, it heals itself back over. Um, I want to make it as smooth a transition as possible. Um, but at the same time, I want to kind of pay attention. There's some, you know, some buds down here. As, the, as many buds around the base that I can save ensures me that this is not going to die back any further. I've seen some where you cut these and there would be no back budding down lower. And what happens is this whole portion of the tree dies back all the way down to where the next bud's growing. Um, so it's really important when you're first starting to do a design on a collective Yamadori or even a tree that's at a nursery, you want to cut it back way above where you intend the tree to be. That way it gives the tree enough time to do its necessary dieback and back budding. And this applies on any tree, not just the Japanese maple. Because you get dieback on just about all of them um, to a certain extent. You let it grow like that for a couple years so it can back bud and you get your established branches. That way you know what you have to work with for the second phase, which is really the first initial styling of the tree. The first phase is getting it into a growing container and doing your main cuts. The second phase is what we're doing today is we've figured out the outline of the tree that we want to use and are further pruning back the branches that we don't need and we're keeping the secondary back budding branches that we've let grow freely to wire into position for our main branches. So that's where we are here. I'm going to go ahead and do the grinding. I'm going to go ahead and grind these wound areas down to where they need to be and go ahead and apply some cut paste. These aren't as bad as trident maples as far as sapping is concerned, but they will bleed out a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to bore you with the grinding. Um, it's very loud and obnoxious and basically it's just a matter of taking a grinding or carving tool. The ones that I've used with, with good success um, are from the Cutsall brand, K-U-T-Z-A-L-L. Um, Woodcrafters carries them. You can get them online as well. If you just type in Cutsall on a web search, it will pull them up.